The original Mark IV Volkswagen Golf R32 became the most powerful Golf of all time back in 2002. It had 177 kilowatts of power or 240 horsepower. Then in 2008, the Mark V Volkswagen Golf R32 became the most powerful Golf of all time. It had 184 kilowatts of power or 250 horsepower. Well, in the car you see behind me is a brand new Mark 7.5 Volkswagen Golf R. You guessed it, the most powerful Golf of all time. Power is up once again and it doesn't sound half bad. Let's take a closer look. Welcome back to not quite sunny Tasmania. Last time we were here, we were checking out a 2008 Mark V Volkswagen Golf R32. This one. This time we're back in Tasmania to check out this 2018 Mark 7.5 Golf R, finished in this beautiful tornado red colour. And interestingly, this car is actually owned by the same person who used to own that very same Mark V. Forgive the beanie and the jacket too, it's about two and a half or three degrees Celsius out here today. There's a little bit of rain forecast, so we'll see how we go. Starting with the outside first and up front, we can see this revised front bumper for the Mark 7.5 compared with the original Mark 7 look. A bit more aggressive, you've got these gloss black intakes here, and if you look inside, you can see that they're full of cooler goodness. We've also got automatic LED daytime running lights, automatic LED headlights, and these are your indicator strips just there. We've got a chrome Golf R badge here on this gloss black and chrome front grille. If we move along the car, we've also got these chrome R badges on both revised front fenders. If we look up, we've got these matte chrome and plastic wing mirrors here. If I move further back so that we can see the whole side of the car, you can see we've also got these 19 inch 10 spoke Spielberg alloy wheels. And they're standard fitment on the Golf R in Australia, and they come standard wrapped in 23535 Continental Conti Sport Contact 5P tyres, front and rear. If we have a look inside the wheel, you'll see up front we've got three 40mm ventilated discs with a single piston caliper that's painted black and with an R logo on it, hiding behind the wheel there. And at the back, we've got another single piston caliper, also painted black, and that's clamping a 310 millimeter ventilated disc. I really, really like this gloss black side skirt here as well. So quite a subtle trim element, and particularly on this Tornado red car, it just really helps that color pop. It looks really, really cool. At the back, gone is the original R32's twin centrally mounted exhaust pipes. They've been gone since the Mark 7 launched in 2013. Instead, we've got this quad exit chrome tipped exhaust system flanking a gloss black rear diffuser. We've also got a rear Golf R badge there. LED tail lights with, as you can see, dynamic indicators there. That's quite cool, new touch. And if we move further up, we've got this body colored rear spoiler here with these gloss black accents on the side. I also really like this super sleek gloss black shark fin style antenna there. Interestingly, helping give the Golf R its stance, it actually keeps the same ratio as the Mark V R32 did in sitting 20 millimeters lower than a standard Volkswagen Golf and five millimeters lower than a standard Golf GTI. Under the bonnet lives the Golf R's turbocharged two litre EA888 four cylinder engine with Aussie delivered cars making 213 kilowatts of power at 5,400 RPM and 380 newton meters of torque from 1850 RPM. Although I do know that other markets around the world get this car with up to 228 kilowatts of power or 310 horsepower. 
Now look, it's true that Golf R's Turbo 4 doesn't sound anywhere near as cool as the old R32's naturally aspirated 3.2 litre 24 valve VR6 V6 engine, but this thing does have more power, more torque than the old six cylinder, plus it generates enough oomph to help the four wheel drive Golf R hustle from naught to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.8 seconds, when paired with the seven speed dual clutch DSG transmission that is fitted to this car. If we have a look inside, and it's no surprise that the inside of the Mark 7.5 Golf R is similar to the 7.5 Golf GTI in that it is really, really plush. It's a nice cabin. We can see these leather sport seats there. Got the R logo on them there. Now the driver's one here is power adjustable. You've also got your memory function here. That's a good thing. The passenger one is entirely manually adjustable though. If we jump in uh, out of the cold, that's much nicer. And overall, you can see the materials used, the quality of the materials, really, really nice. You've got this aluminium stripe along here, the trim here, also on the doors. And you can see that that it's actually illuminated with some blue ambient light. We'll show you another thing that does that in a, in a moment as well. Again, more touches on the door handles and you've actually got that same aluminium strip around the air vents and again on the driver's door. I really like this gear shifter here. So you've got this leather and aluminium style gear knob here, but if you look at the detail down the side here, you can see that it's got this sort of carbon look trim to it, which I really like and it feels quite nice in the hands. This steering wheel also feels nice in the hand. You've got this really nice flat bottom R-stamped multifunction leather steering wheel here. Nice rim on the thing. It's quite firm, um, not too thick, but not too thin either. It feels really good in the hands. Technology is also top shelf on the Golf R with a 9.2 inch central touchscreen tied to an eight speaker stereo, satellite navigation, gesture and voice controls, Bluetooth phone connectivity and audio streaming, Apple CarPlay, along with a performance monitor and a lap timer. There's Volkswagen's vastly configurable 12.3 inch active info display, dual zone climate control, rain sensing wipers, an auto dimming rear view mirror, a rear view camera, front and rear parking sensors, aluminium sports pedals and illuminated sill plates. A driver's assistance package also throws adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist and blind spot monitoring into the mix. Storage is really solid too. You've got these really big felt line door pockets here. The driver has this little cubby area here. Again, really good place for some cards or loose change. You've got this hidden area here. If we pop that open, you've got this rubber shelf here with a auxiliary input and USB port in there. You've got dual cup holders here. I'll show you very quickly. This, this is the key for it as well. And if you can see the little detail of the R there, I think that's a really nice touch as well on the key, kind of cool. But you've got your dual cup holders here with a retractable lid, which is handy. You've got obviously your electronic parking brake with auto hold here. You've got a 12 volt outlet here, a little space for some change, which is handy as well. You've got this small-ish center console bin. It's not terribly deep, but it's uh, still big enough to be useful. And that top armrest there does actually slide forward and back. You've got a sunglasses holder tucked into the dark up there, but there is a sunglasses holder up there, which is good. And if we have a look at the glove box, it's quite a good size glove box. In there, you'll also find up the top here, a CD player and two SD card um, slots there as well. And we can see there's a manual in here and despite the reasonably nice leather case with, with some stitching here, What's a little bit average, I think, anyways, the manual that you get is the same for a Golf, a Golf GTI, a Golf GTT, or the Golf R. So it doesn't feel all that special, to be honest. In the back, we can see that rear seat space is pretty good. Um, enough to fit a couple of people back here, and if you had to, it a squeeze, probably a third. Again, nice materials used, more aluminium on the doors, door handles there, same on the other side. Um, you've got two outboard Isofix compatible seats there, more leather, 
more stitching, although the rear seats aren't embossed with the uh, R logo on them. You've got mat pockets there, rear air vents, which is good too, your own interior lights, which is a bonus. Storage, again, pretty good. Good sized door pockets, again, felt lined, which is nice as well. And you've got this fold down center armrest here with these two cup holders with these little plastic parts are actually adjustable. You can pop them out and reset the size that you need for your cups, which I think is quite a clever little idea. And behind that, you've actually got a ski port. So if you need to access the boot or get larger items through there, you've got a bit more space and practicality. The rear seats are 60-40 split fold as well with releases up the top here. So if we drop the seats there, it gives you the option to increase the boot volume from 343 litres to 1233 litres. In the boot, you've also got two luggage hooks, one on the right-hand side, one on the left-hand side. And if we go back to the right-hand side, you'll also see there's a 12 volt outlet there. And underneath the floor, you'll find a space saver spare tire. They say evolution is the gradual development of something and that's so true about this model. That really sums up the Golf R. Not a whole lot of the car is necessarily revolutionary, but the progressive evolution of the model over the years is seriously impressive. And the kind of performance that it offers really is amazing. How much more performance do you need out of a daily driven family hatchback? It's nuts. But more than that, it's also supremely flexible. I reach down towards the gear lever and you can push this mode button here to bring up a variety of different driving modes to choose from. You've got eco, comfort, normal, and individual. And while the same system is in a Golf GTI, unique to the Golf R is this race mode. Push race mode and you put the car into its most aggressive mode. That means sharpening up the throttle response, adding a bit more weight to the steering, increasing the noise from the engine, and also firming up the adaptive dampers. Pair that sort of adjustability with this punchy and responsive two liter turbo engine and that Haldex based four motion four wheel drive system. And <laughs> depending on how greasy the road is on the day you're driving it, you can turn the Golf R into a genuine little pocket rocket. Seriously fast and very, very capable. It's only too easy to get carried away in the Golf R. It may not sound the best. But geez, even with an electronic front diff instead of a mechanical one, the Golf R really, really knows how to hustle through a twisty road. Even a cold, damp one like we've got today. The grip and the agility is just bonkers. It is ridiculous. It's five degrees <laughs> and the road is damp and we have just got grip for days. As good as it is, I can't help but feel like I might be having a bit more fun if there was a six speed manual transmission here instead of this seven speed wet clutch DQ381 DSG. But I totally get why so many people opt for this transmission, including the owner of this car. The DSG has definitely had its problems over the years, but the system has been bettered and bettered and constantly refined. And honestly, in this guise, it is pretty bloody good and seriously fast. 
as impressive as a lot of the Golf R is, it's not that light at around 1450 kilograms, which you can feel. And fast or not, and it is fast, it does fall short in terms of engagement. While its predecessors, the early Golf R32s, were more raw and immersive, the modern Golf R just slightly feels a bit more disconnected, a bit anaesthetized in its experience. It just lacks in terms of feedback and that communication just isn't quite there. That said, the electromechanical steering is direct and it is responsive. It just falls short in terms of communication. You always know where the front wheels are pointing and the car responds really well. You just don't quite feel at one with it. It's almost as if the Golf R is intentionally not telling you exactly what's going on on the road beneath it because most of the time, it really doesn't matter. The reason it doesn't matter is because of this suspension. The car is so controlled and so compliant, even on bumpy roads and even with the suspension in its firmest setting. In the end though, what do I love most about the Mark 7.5 Golf R? Well, it's fast and it's supremely capable. The speeds that it can achieve are genuinely mind-numbing. It is astounding how fast you can get through some of these corners and anyone can be fast in a Golf R. It's an easy car to drive fast. But what I love most is where it sits in the model's evolution. For me, the Mark 7.5 Golf R represents the peak of the evolution of the species. The Mark IV and Mark V R32s were arguably more pure than the Mark VI and Mark VII took things on a slightly different path. And now this 7.5 really is the culmination of high levels of refinement and all out performance. And in years to come, this car, this is the one that will mark the end of a non hybrid infused Golf R. But right here, right now, this is the one we get to enjoy and what a seriously good package. <laughs> it's always heartbreaking having to give these cars back at the end of the day. So I'm gonna keep driving for a little bit longer, but if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And in the meantime, remember to subscribe. See you next time.